thanks everyone for being here on the Wednesday after our AGM. And that's one of the topics of today's meeting, our Fusion monthly meeting for the month of October. My name's Andrea Leong and uh, I am the uh, Science Party rep on the Executive Committee. And the Executive is in caretaker mode at the moment as we are voting for our next Exec Committee. Uh, I am coming to you from uh, Gadigal Country. I'm signed in in uh, the inner west of Sydney. Uh, Gadigal Country, part of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to Gadigal Elders, past and present. So tonight we'll have some updates on, as I mentioned, the AGM, membership, finance, policy committee, um, which is a new development for us, and a Victorian election update. So the first thing to note is that our AGM has been rescheduled. It was held on Sunday, just gone, the 23rd of October. We didn't reach a quorum of members there, um, which is 5% of the entire membership. So it's 90 something members we needed. Uh, we didn't get that. So we have rescheduled to Sunday, the 6th of November. And we had a good discussion though about many of the, all of the motions that were on the table. So those have been deferred until uh, the 6th of November, where we will hold those votes. Those motions were to confirm the previous minutes of the, um, the last general meeting, to accept the financial report, which Michael Moroski delivered, to vote on some constitutional changes, and finally, whether or not to introduce a membership fee. So there's a lot of discussion on all of those, um, and that can be found in the recording that is on YouTube. Or if you go to our website, in the About menu, there is a, a live streams item there that you can find the recording. And if you are watching this later, then you'll know where to look because it's the previous recording. So we did start the committee elections on Sunday. Uh, those are happening online. Hopefully everyone here has got an email from OpaVote, which is the voting platform that we're using. If you didn't, please send an email to um, either contact at fusionparty.org.au or for any technical advice, you can email Liam Pomfret, our returning officer for the elections. But if you didn't get an email, uh, please check spam and um, if it's not in there, send us an email. Voting will close just before the rescheduled meeting. So closing at the end of Saturday, 5th of November. So on Sunday, we will have those results. A uh, quick membership update. Um, at the start of October, we were down nine members since last month. So the total is now 1,784 members, um, of which the fusion wedge here is ever growing. This month, we're also, oh, sorry, one more thing. So all the new members that we got in September were unaligned to a branch. Um, so they were new signups in Victoria. We are going to start now um, at our membership, sorry, at our monthly member meetings, looking at membership by state of residence. Um, so uh, Victoria is just... Um, Pipping New South Wales at the moment for the most members with 534. And you can see all the totals for the other states there. Um, so this tells us where we are and where we need to be for any um, attempts uh, that we want to make into registering for state and territory elections. But we'll um, move on to financial reports with our treasurer, Michael Moroski. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, I'll go through these very quickly, I think. Um, uh, so just quickly through the, the standard reports, profit and loss and the balance on the next slide, which will be uh, so interesting come 11 cents, always very uh, an interesting there. Uh, so in donations, $386, uh, a decent sort of, again, uh, pretty standard solid amount uh, that we're receiving. That's mostly around our monthly uh, pledges that we, that we have. So as always, thank you very much for those. Down to expenses, uh, we have a few items here. Uh, some of them are just the standard things. So in consulting and accounting, we just have our zero costs. That's just our accounting software. Uh, in IT services and subscriptions, we have a little bit of extra than usual. There's the normal G Suite, uh, which is used for emails and things like that. Uh, but there is also the cost we've paid for OpaVote, uh, which is what we are using to process the voting for our AGM motions. Uh, 
Then transaction fees is uh, Stripe fees that you pay for receiving donations. There are some international transactions fees we have to pay for over vote as well. So total expenses of $560.57. So a net negative for this uh, particular month, but with some obviously relative pretty uh, important expenses that we've spent. Um, bring us under a bit there. So that's not too bad. Um, so then the next slide with the balance report and just the current state of the bank accounts as at that point, uh, as, of, as of today, uh, in the in the accounts, we've got $12,320.84. That's across the, the various accounts. And uh, in liabilities, just a, a little bit there, which is just some a few unpaid accounts, including those sort of expenses that we talked about um, uh, in the profit and loss. Uh, and just some final reimbursements that are almost wrapped up from the uh, from the election. Uh, so the net position we have there is nine thousand six hundred sixty six dollars and six cents. Uh, so that's that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, that's that's all from me. Too easy. Thanks, Michael. Uh, well, let's move on to our announcement about the policy development committee. Um, so. Since uh, earlier in the year, um, the Fusion Executive has established the three committees, the Campaigns Committee, Engagement Committee and Communications Committee, and has uh, terms of reference for those. And um, we've minted a fourth group here, the Policy Development Committee. Um, so this structure here that I'm showing, by the way, is it's uh, it's not set in stone. It's um, a living document and is um, subject to updating, but this is how we're envisioning the uh, pillars of our operation at the moment. So the policy development committee, I'll share the terms of that. Um, the purpose, I'll read it out actually. Um, Fusion exists to represent the view of our members and all Australians on legislative topics in Australia. In order to do this, the party's key outputs are political candidates for election to parliament and a policy platform that will deliver the future that the party represents. Fusion needs a strong policy platform developed in line with the party's core values and principles, backed by evidence and expert advice. The Policy Development Committee exists to ensure that the Fusion policy platform meets and exceeds the expectations of the party members. And the scope of this committee is to develop the internal procedures to be followed for party policy development. So how do the members actually uh, put together our policies? at the national, state and local levels, define methods for submitting policy ideas and minimum requirements for a policy development initiation. So this is uh, if a member has an idea for how to um, update or add a policy to our platform, how, um, how do they actually do that? How do they get involved in that way? Uh, oversee the discussion and formalization of policy suggestions to be presented for acceptance into the party platform in line with internal procedures. So that's how do we get from policy development to passing it into the public platform that we present. Assist subcommittees and working groups to make decisions in line with approved policies, procedures and guidelines, including val endorsed values and principles. So for instance, when we have um, candidates running in elections, um, the policy development committee should be uh, available to um, consult and uh, make sure that we are wording things well in line with our policy platform. Maintain a record of the party policy platform and ensure policy is reviewed and updated periodically as required. Um, so we know that um, circumstances and legislation and policies change and we want to keep our policy relevant and uh, not be arguing for things that have been already passed into um, you know, national Australian policy or uh, when the, uh, the argument moves on, we can be more ambitious and bold. And finally, collaborate with other committees, particularly communications and campaigns committees to determine how best to present policy points internally and to the public. Hmm. Maybe that was the explanation I had for the third last point there. Um, but it's quite self-explanatory. So this is the policy development committee that we'll be um, maintaining as we go forward. And we're calling for expressions of interest to chair this committee and to join this committee. 
So if you're interested, please contact any organisers, uh, jump onto Discord, contact at fusionparty.org.au. Um, does anyone have any questions about Policy Development Committee? Zaha? I'd just be curious, um, it, is there a time you'd like to finalise people who have nominated to um, be chair? Yeah, I'm sort of going off the cuff here because we haven't really uh, set a, uh, a time for that. I'd say definitely within the next two weeks before the rescheduled AGM. I, uh, I just joined a, a minute ago. Cool. Um, I was quite right. enjoying your uh, your summary. But yeah, I, I, I didn't have a, a timeline in mind either. Obviously, the the best answer is as soon as possible, probably for the first couple of points in that scope there, I'd like to kick off those um, process development sections, mm. um, but also just to, to be clear for everyone else who might not want to formally join a committee, but still interested in developing policies. Oh, yeah. I think we have a lot of people interested and in, have their hot takes that they'd like to put in, but it'd be really good to know... Um, like a, a structure or a vessel that people can point to because um, we were just saying before as well with the budget response be good if we know who we can look at and be like hey let's work on this. I'm looking forward to it because we um, you know we did a, a good job in the time that we had available to get our branch policies together into a coherent fusion platform and now we've got a little bit more space but uh, we should do as soon as as soon as is practical practicable review the remaining policy from the branches and see what fusion wants to add because uh, the founding parties the branches had uh well obviously i think they have the best policy in australia um i think the pirate party and science party were probably uh neck and neck for some of the most detailed policy platforms in australia mm, yeah i mean we'll we'll have a lot of work if anyone wants to get stuck in because i know the front page of the website could do with a little bit of a and edit as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, we can move on to Victorian campaign updates. So I'll hand over to Miles. Thanks, Andrea. So we've currently endorsed two candidates for the election. We'll be endorsing a third, hopefully endorsing a third shortly. And uh, there's been a lot of comms going about them. So these should be fairly familiar to most Victorian members, um, Simon and Cammy. We uh, have communicated to members just this week and uh, last week as well. We don't expect we're going to make party registration at a state level. Out of the 500 members we need, we have approximately 300 have confirmed their membership. So it is quite a difficult process for state registration. Obviously, we have um, somewhat under 600 members in Victoria and uh, part of that is a result of a extensive membership drive we've gone through over the last few months. So we have gained a large number of members in Victoria as a result of that. Um, so you can see at uh, 534 currently. We have a number of upcoming events. The date for the election is the 26th. Um, so we'll have a final sort of update on the status of the election. We'll be next meeting and the meeting after will be a, a review or retrospective. Hopefully we'll have done the debrief by the time of the December member meeting, if it, if um, if we hold one that month, um, in in the announcement we've got upcoming volunteer events in in Victoria, which I'm hoping to see heaps of members at. So I'll be I'll actually be flying into Melbourne for that one this Saturday at two p.m. and I'll be meeting up with Simon Neeslaw, our Bentley candidate, and uh, we'll be dis we'll be having a discussion on futurology and how we can bring that into the Victorian election. We'll also be looking at our policies and campaigning more generally around Melbourne. Uh, there is also an upcoming event for uh, one of our regional candidates and on the weekend of November 4th. Uh, two of our regional candidates were hoping to have meet and greet volunteer events that weekend. So we'll have comms coming out to uh, local members and the local campaign volunteers, uh, hopefully over the next week. So the, the campaign has been pretty interesting so far obviously we um, at this point we're uh, conceding we're probably not going to make state registration so we'll be having a lot of putting a lot of thought into the things we've done and the things we would do differently it was a bit of a gamble going into it and uh, a lot of this will come out in the debrief 
Um, but I'm quite happy with the results that we've had so far. And we still do have three candidates who are quite enthusiastic to run as independents, despite um, despite our failure to get state registration. So we're steaming ahead with organizing those campaigns. And, uh, and we're confident that we'll have some kind of impact on Victorian politics. Uh, does anyone have any questions about Vic the Victorian campaign? Uh, just what should people do if they want to support our endorsed independents? If you are interstate, you you actually can contribute. We'll have you um, volunteering or, or donating. So the volunteering will take the form of jumping on the phones and calling up members and supporters to help coordinate and uh, and and drum up support and get more volunteers. If you are an in-person uh, in Victoria and within driving distance of those of one of those three candidates, then we'll be reaching out to you probably more directly if we haven't already. And uh, so those three candidates, one is in um, Mansfield area, one's in the Murray Plains area, one's in the Bentley area, which is sort of south of Melbourne. Uh, so the the kind of campaign events we're talking about, we'll be getting letterboxing and um, we'll be doing pre-polling and polling itself. So volunteers are keen to get out there and hand out some flyers and support our candidates. Um, we would love to to have you. So important thing to note is that they will be running as as independents. So they're officially fusion will be supporting them, but also not supporting them. It's a bit of a sort of a, a Schrodinger's party situation. Um, there'll be a, a learning experience in how we can sort of navigate that, um, that, that gray area. Cool. Thanks, Miles. Um, events coming up. Yep. Yeah, as noted, the Melbourne meetup on this Saturday, 29th at 2 PM, um, the jazz corner cafe in the city, uh, yeah, and the first and third Wednesdays of the month, we have our politics and hot takes chats on Discord. That's sort of a pipeline at the moment for policy development. Uh, but also on Discord at the moment, we've got a good text chat about the budget, which was um, handed down last night. We've got our AGM, which, as we mentioned at the start of the meeting, has been rescheduled for Sunday, the 6th of November. And um, the next monthly meeting is on the last Thursday of the month, Wednesday, 30th of November. Um, and sorry, not on there is the Friday, 4th of November, um, Murray Plains meetup. If you're watching this, um, you'll see the previous recording on YouTube is our AGM. And there was lots of discussion there, uh, including speeches for our committee nominees. I do have a quick mention if I could, but it has been raised as well around a process um, to review the name of the party. Oh yeah. So for anyone who wasn't there, don't don't freak out just yet. Um, it's just a, a review process, not a not a complete um, set in stone thing. So our convener um, Peter Johnson has put together a process um, that's been reviewed and endorsed by the outgoing executive committee for a, a review of the party name. Uh, the main reason behind that is just to make sure that everyone's really solid on a, on a foundation that we can build a long-standing political movement on, um, given that Fusion was a great name, actually, um, but very, very quickly sort of brought up and given um, a lot of its its focus on the original um, coming together of those founding parties as, as the premise for the name. Uh, so this will be a, a review process that'll go over just the next couple of months, mostly through November, December. And if there are names that come out of that process that are preferred from Fusion, then those will go out, um, go out to a, a more significant decision process, but this will um, enable people to have have some input um, on a naming process. So I will be sending out a document um, as part of some upcoming uh, communications as well. And that'll go through um, sort of the process that's been put together, the criteria that the names will be um, marked against, I guess, and a, uh, a timeline of that as well. So uh, watch out for, for that if you're interested in um in being involved in that process cool thanks roger for um yep, reminding us of that one actually in the chat here we've just had a look at sam's gone and gathered the 
totals. So yeah, New South Wales requires 750 members. So we're a little bit off that uh, in order to register for state elections. Um, and it was always going to be a little bit uh, slim, uh, like a slim margin for Victoria, which requires 500 members. I just want to double check those member numbers. I believe, is that a direct export from the Nation Builder database? Good question. In which case it will not include the pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think there's about, for the Vic numbers, there's about another 70 or 80 pirate members, which should push us a bit over 600, I think. Yeah, that does sound right. Thanks, Miles. So the, the, the other numbers would probably be a bit larger, especially for New South Wales and Queensland. Yes, that is good to note. And we'll have to figure out how we report that. Uh, oh, we'd be, I think we'd be quite happy to send a regular update of our database numbers. Cool, cool. Um, yes, so ACT, um, most of our ACT members are from the Climate Change Justice Party, and that is a party that is registered in the ACT. So we've got um, discussions there before the uh, territory elections in 2024. Um, 200 members for South Australia. Ooh, pretty slim there on 65 members in South Australia. We've got some campaigning there to do if we're going to register for state elections 500 for western australia it's hard um to get can, I, can i just say for the west australia and south australia during the federal election they had a fantastic volunteer count mm. about 15 to 20 volunteers i believe each for both of those states so considering the amount of members in those states that's a fantastically high volunteer rate yeah yeah active memberships in those states i think um yeah quite clever and targeted campaigns from the Senate candidates there. Queensland, really, 500, same as Victoria, despite the lower population. Sorry, I was looking into Queensland recently, and um, they've got a more streamlined process compared to Victoria and New South Wales. Does it not necessarily need paper forms like Victoria and New South Wales? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just double checking that. Cool. I mean, you'd think, given that the AEC has all of our members on record, you think you'd be able to just kind of automatically register once you have enough members in each state. But alas, it is not the case. 